Oh man, I'm out of coffee. I'm gonna have to rectify this. Hi everybody, I'm here with Sierra and uh, we're in our kitchen here at Deathwish Coffee HQ and uh, we've been hearing a lot about how you guys want to know about different brewing methods um, and the best way to brew coffee and the one that I think trumps it all and, and is at the top echelon of everybody's brew method is the Chemex. And before I started working here at Deathwish, I didn't even know what a Chemex was. Did you, did, had you heard about it before you started working here? I had heard of the Chemex, um, and I found it very intimidating when I first started to learn about it when I was a barista. So it looks like mad science. It does. You do feel like a mad scientist when uh, you're brewing with it. And, you know, that's, that's one of the benefits to me, I think, is, you know, having that experimental flair. Yeah, so everything you'd need if you want to brew out of a Chemex, uh, most of it we sell right on our site. Um, you'd need the Chemex brewer, the Chemex filters, um, which they make because of the specific type of paper that they're made allows the coffee to brew the right way. Paper filter is going to catch all of the oils in that coffee, all of the excess oil. So what you're left with is like a very low acidity, all of that flavor, no bitterness uh, at the end. Yeah, and then obviously you're gonna need a kettle to brew, to boil your water, and we just so happen to have a really awesome kettle right on our website. Um, and uh, coffee, definitely need coffee. We not only have actual death wish today, but because we're so excited for our delicious barrel brand, which is coming out right around the St. Patrick's Day season, uh, we're gonna brew some, oh my God, even just talking. I can smell it through the bag. It's, oh, it's, it's so good. It smells so good. I can't wait to open one of these. <laughs> and um, you're going to need, uh, it, the best thing to do is to do it with whole bean coffee because you're going to get the freshest coffee because you're going to grind it yourself. If you do have pre-ground coffee, you're looking for the coarseness of like kosher salt when you're doing it. But we recommend if you're using, if you're going out of your way to become a mad scientist and use a Chemex, why not, you know. You want to grind it fresh. Grind it fresh. Why not, right? And then optional, um, is to use a scale and to actually weigh the coffee as you do it. And that actually puts even more science behind this. Um, you're going to do that because uh, you're a little bit better at it than I am, and I'm going to do it just the haphazard, normal person way without a scale. Yeah, because at the same time, while it's great to take your time and really get into all of the nitty-gritty details of making this really yummy taste of coffee, uh, you know, you got to be realistic. We all live lives. If you're brewing this in the morning before going to work, like, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm not going to use a scale. I'm just, I'm human. Shoot me. And when we say a scale, we mean a, just, a, just a normal food weigh scale, you know, like that goes up to like what? Like a couple, like three kilograms this one does. So yeah, like this. something like that. Real, real easy. We might have some for sale soon. I don't know. Keep looking at deathwishcoffee.com. But uh, let's get brewing. So when you're uh, weighing out your coffee, uh, I would recommend weighing it out before you grind it uh, in bean form. Um, with this, if you're brewing a uh, six, a full six cup Chemex, um, you're gonna wanna use, depending on the coffee that you're brewing, you know, somewhere between 45 and 50 grams. I'm just gonna go ahead and do 50 grams. So you wanna turn your scale on. If you have, you know, the container on it, um, just make sure it's at zero. Oh yeah. So that you're not weighing the container too. Just pour. So is there a reason why you'd want to weigh the beans before you actually grind them? Because I've seen it both ways. I've seen people just weigh the grinds once they've ground. Once they've ground the grinds. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm just like, I just think it's maybe a little, uh, little less messy. Perfect. Perfect. 3.1. <laughs> Perfect. Now we're ready to grind. Let's do it. When you're grinding your coffee, uh, it's recommended that you'd want to use maybe like a hand grinder that is a burr grinder because you're going to get that nice coarse grind. What we're using right here is our industrial grinder at HQ. Um, it grinds all of our coffee for all of us all the time and it's a heck of a lot easier than having to sit there with our hands. So now that you got your coffee ground, the next step you're going to want to do is 
fold out your filter and it looks like origami this whole thing is just mad science but it's um, an art actually fun <laughs> fact the chemex is in the museum of modern art in new york city it's, as a piece of art. it's been there since 1943 pretty crazy so okay so what do i do all right, so back to the filter. So when you're putting the filter in the Chemex, the filter has a thin, like just one side of paper, and then it has this thicker side that's like a few different layers. You want the side with the layers to be on the side of the spout. And that's just so that the coffee isn't really bleeding through that, that spout section uh, when you're pouring the water over So did it. I do it right? You're doing a great job. Yay. So yeah, so. More, more, more layers on the spout side and less layers on the other side. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then the optional thing um, is to wet your filter before you actually put the coffee in it because it'll create a seal against the paper against the glass. You don't have to do this. But um, it is kind of recommended. Yeah, and also just heating up, you know, the Chemex itself. Um, it's just it'll keep your coffee warm a little bit longer rather than pouring, you know, hot liquid into a, a colder container. Yeah, you just want to put enough on there just to wet it. You really don't want to get, you know, any excess water at the bottom um, just because you don't want to water down your coffee. So I just try to use a light hand, go kind of slow. And you can always pour out any extra water that winds up in the bottom of the... Which I definitely recommend, because again, watered down coffee, no bueno. You don't need that. You want some of this? Yes. Careful. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell we do this all the time? <laughs> nah, we don't do this all the time. Oh, great pour, Jeff. <laughs> all right. All right. So I think we're just about ready to go. All right. So, what do we do now? Water is boiled. Yep. Coffee is ground. Yep. I've measured mine out. Jeff is eyeballing his. Mm -hmm. So, let's No just measurements go ahead. here. I'm going to go ahead and add this. Just dump it right in there. Again, you want your grind to be kind of like that sea salt texture, if that means anything to you. Kind of like a, you know, medium coarse grind. Get it all in there. You just want to shake it, level it out, maybe pat it down a bit. Not a little bit more than you do. When I got a smorgasbord too, because we we use the the industrial grinder, so I got some I got some Irish cream Ooh. in mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which I gotta tell you guys, if you do get our Irish cream barrel band, um, not only is it good on its own, but if you cut it with Death Wish, I love two parts Irish cream, one part Death Wish. It's delicious. So now you're gonna put that, you're gonna use the scale. So you're gonna put this on the scale and you're gonna zero it out, right? Yep, I'm gonna get real techie with it. So you, you can put your Chemex on the scale if you really care about how much water that you're pouring in at every moment. Some people that are, you know, coffee connoisseurs, <laughs> they, they really care about that. It changes the flavor if you pay attention to it. So put your Chemex on the scale, again, zero it out. Um, and then you're gonna start pouring. And this is this is where the technique really comes in. Yeah. You wanna do a circular pour, starting right around the center and then making your way slowly out towards the uh, edges of where your coffee is in the filter. Um, and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm really nervous, you guys. <laughs> So just take it slow. You want to try to wet all of the grounds. And that circular motion is key. And that's just to get everything everything nice and, and wet and willy in there. So I'm going to do it. And after you've made that first pour, you want to give it a, a couple of seconds to, you know, let that let that brew and drain through the grinds. It's called blooming, and this is what's taking, it's basically degassing the coffee, which you don't get from a drip machine or, you know, even a French press. You, you'll get it a little bit, but this is, that's why so many, as you said, coffee connoisseurs love this um, brew method because you're actually getting all that extra gas that you really don't want in your cup of coffee anyways out of your cup of coffee. And it's a sign of freshness, too, when coffee blooms. Um, oh, I so, didn't know that. Yeah. So if you're getting techie with it um, and you're pouring your water, what I'm doing, the reason the Chemex is on the scale is because you want to try to pour 200 grams of water at once. Give it a rest, let it go through, 
200 grams again until you're at about 700 grams, which is going to be right at the, uh, yeah, the end of this little wooden. Right below the collar is what you're looking for for a full pot of coffee. Now see, I'm not gonna deal with all that science and I'm just gonna keep pouring until I feel it's okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna keep going around in that circular motion, uh, making sure you wet all the grinds and you can see the outline of the top of the Chemex and you wanna keep it, if you're just eyeballing it like I am, you wanna keep it about a quarter inch from that top. So you just keep going around until it comes up, until it's about a quarter inch and then you give it a stop and you let it drain out a little bit and you'll see it kind of bubble and drain out. Um, again, before I started working here, never knew that something like this existed, but it's incredible how much this has been in popular culture. And it, it's, it was popular kind of back in like what, the 80s? Yeah, 80s yeah. Died out, and now it's back and it's booming. Yeah, um, I mean it was invented in 1941 by a doctor. I have his name. His name is Peter Schlumblom. Oh, Peter. <laughs> And uh, I mean, he basically invented this to create a, um, a brewing method that would not affect the cup of coffee you're getting. So this isn't adding any flavors. It's only taking away some of those gases and some of that stuff that you don't want in your coffee. Um, but yeah, if you, if you are a James Bond fan in uh, To Russia From Love, it's actually written in the book. Ian Fleming writes about how uh, James Bond is such a coffee connoisseur, he only drinks out of a Chemex. Obviously, when he's probably home and not out killing bad guys and stuff, uh, you know, like he has to get a cup of coffee on the on the go. But it's been featured in the Mary Tyler Moore Show. It's been featured in, um, gosh, uh, Friends. The first episode of Friends in the pilot. It's in Monica's kitchen, which is crazy. And you never even would catch it really. It was in the movie Rosemary's Baby. It's even in um, uh, Steel Magnolias. Steel Magnolias. Sure. Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine, a new sitcom that's out now. They, they, uh, you can see it on one of the the detectives' desks all the time. I feel like we're racing right now. I think you're winning. Um, but yeah, it was even uh, in the movie Inter Interstellar, they were using it not to brew coffee, but like to, I don't know, do some chemistry <laughs> with or whatever, but like there were Chemexes in there and that's pretty neat. And uh, yeah, when I saw, before I ever worked for Death Wish, I was a fan of Death Wish. And when I saw um, Death Wish at events, like especially Taya using these, I was like, what the hell is that nonsense? <laughs> yeah, when we go to events, we'll have like eight of these lined up all next to each other, and we're just brewing them all at once. And uh, it catches the eyes of passersby, for sure. You get that chocolatiness that you can taste that sometimes you just wouldn't get that flavor brewing with, you know, like a regular drip brewer. It just, it doesn't come through. Whereas this, you're manually pouring the water in there, so you have total control over what you're brewing. You control how much water is going in at once, or how much water isn't going in at once. You also can control the, the amount of coffee you put in there. I mean, you were much more sciencey with this and weighed it out, and you know, I didn't do that. And mine's probably gonna be a heck of a lot stronger cup of coffee because I had a lot more grinds in there. So it's on your preference. And that's kind of the fun of Chemex too. Ever since I bought one, and um, we use it on the weekends, like I said, uh, I'm always trying new things. Like maybe I should add a little bit more coffee. Maybe I should add less water. Maybe I should, you know, to try it at a different temperature. You know, like it is, it's chemistry. It's, it's fun. It's like a really good weekend brewer. Like yeah. It's really good like Saturday morning, cartoons are on, like let's brew up some coffee. Um, it's, you know, personally, it's not something that I use during the weekdays because I try to, you know, get up, get out of bed and go to work all within 15 minutes. But, Ditto. uh, it's a fun brewer. It's fun. And, and when you're in the mood, it's fun to play with. It's funny. Everyone has their own preference. You know, some people just really want the convenience. Some people want the precision and flavor. Uh, it's all about what you want. It's all about, you know, coffee is a social thing, but it's also a very personal thing. And I've said this before, that if you want to actually have a delicious cup of coffee, you know, there are ways like the Chemex to make it the best way possible. But if I, there's something to be said, and we've had this discussion before, there's something to be said about a greasy spoon diner yes. cup of coffee. Oh. You know, I mean like, and, and you, you never think like us at Death Wish would say that, but 
it just warms my heart to yeah. have like a big <laughs> stack of pancakes and that white mug, you know, with a coffee, probably out of a coffee brewer that hasn't been cleaned in 20 years. But still, it like, you know, so there's all ends of the spectrum with coffee. Yeah, especially when you're drinking Death Wish every day, like on the weekends when I, you know, I'm going out to a diner and I get that like, it's like a weak cup of coffee. It's like really watery and like it really doesn't taste good, good but it's different from the like bold flavor of Death Wish. And I'm like, yes. It's like a nice little vacation. It's so good. All right, yours brew a lot faster than mine, and I'm wondering why. Like, you know, maybe it was the grind. Maybe it was how fast you poured. Yeah, the I might water. have been pouring a little I'm bit faster. I'm not like critiquing you or anything. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that yours did brew a lot faster than mine. And that's the thing too. If I were to go slower, you would get a different cup of coffee. I, I'm at nature fast. I also <laughs> so. want to point out that like the way your grind settled versus mine. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're, if you're getting really technical about it, um, you'll notice that like there's a lot of grinds around the sides and ideally when you're pouring your water, you want to try to catch those so that they do level out. More like, like that. More like mine. More like <laughs> yours. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Look, I'm the everyman in this situation. You're the professional, all right? <laughs> So another thing you want to pay attention to, especially when you first start brewing with a Chemex for the first time, this is something that I struggled with when I first started brewing with a Chemex. I remember I like bought a Chemex and like I brought it to like Thanksgiving to like my whole mom's side of the family. I'm like, guys, check this out. Like I brewed Death Wish for them. And then I just made like the worst pot of coffee ever. And it's because I ground the coffee too coarse. Um, so the water went through too fast. And you'll know whether you ground it too coarse or too fine just based on how dark the coffee is, right? So if it's lighter, unless that's what you're going for, um, it's, it's just, you know, you, want, you don't want to really be able to see through the coffee. Otherwise, it's probably a little too light, a little too watered down. You didn't uh, grind the coffee. Um, it, was, it was just way too coarse. You need to grind it a little, a little bit finer. So when you're done, um, finally, with your water and you're done with your brewing, um, you're just going to wait for it to completely be done dripping. So yours has got a little bit more time, but mine is done. You can see because the, the grounds are pretty much dry. And then you're just going to dispose of the grounds and the filter. It's, that, it's really that easy. Yeah, you want to wait until you're... You can see the little the little line of coffee coming down from your filter, and you really want to wait until that's totally done. And that's pretty much it. That's brewing out of a Chemex. Now you can just enjoy your coffee. A couple things about it. Um, after you're done pouring yourself a cup or yourself and your friend, um, what you're going to want to do, if you want to keep it warm, you can get a warmer, but I, you know, electric on glass, you really want to be careful with. So if you have a glass stovetop or a flame stovetop, you can put it on real low heat, put this right on it, and it should be fine. But electric, you could crack the glass and you really don't want to do that. I also recommend what, what my wife and I do is like when we have this much left out of the, 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 the Chemex, we've got our Stanley Thermos, which you can buy at deathwishcoffee.com, and I just put the rest right in the Stanley Thermos and it's hot all day. And that's something I actually really like about the Chemex is that because it kind of takes a little while to brew, by the time that it's done brewing, it's like the perfect drinking temperature. It's not too hot, it's not getting cold yet, and you can just, you can start right away, whereas if you're brewing with like a drip brewer, sometimes you gotta, you know, give it a, a moment or you burn your tongue. Mm -hmm. But it's perfect. And then, the, you know, finally, all you're going to want to do is when you're done, after you've emptied it out, make sure you clean it after every use. You don't really want it to have any of that buildup residue in the glass. And it's really easy. A little soap and water and you're done. And uh, probably the best cup of coffee you'll ever have. And you made it yourself. You did it. Good job. Good job. <laughs>